There's a place, a school, an institution where a professor resides. One that for the past 30 years has traveled the world teaching others. A pioneer in America of the fighting science of Savat. One who codified the sports of this fighting style. One who has produced clubs, champions, and continues to develop. Listen to words of Professor Buitron. Hope you all are doing well. This is our 100th Monday for questions. And um, it's pretty neat to do 100 shows every Monday. There's a lot of content, not only on, on the Monday's questions and answers or viewpoints. There's a lot of content on Savat in general. Uh, there's stuff that we do at the Academy as well as our podcast, Gloves Off. We've been doing this for a while. Now we've been paying more attention to, to the channel. And we want to thank you all for watching. Um, this question this week is really more of a compendium of what we've done throughout the 33 years of uh, Dancer of Savad, of, of physically the academy being out there. You know, I've taught for longer, so has my, since 88 really, but in 1990 really when, when everything kind of took off. The, this this uh, school was already a, around since 88. Uh, so it's a little bit different. You can see the patina on the walls, actually, of, of everything that's been collective over so many years. And uh, we've had many great individuals, not only befriend us, come here, great legends in the martial arts, and it's, they've left something behind, many, uh, many of them. And it has turned out to be a more of a turning into a museum, that's what many people call, call it, but it's, it's actually so many years of doing this moving forward um, and we've had a great great time um, I'm not saying that we're going to quit or anything of that in that nature because we're not uh, but this is like I said this is our hundredth questions and answers I'm not going to be doing them every Monday again I'm going to stop for a while you know summer's coming around um, many many of us have kids uh, get my kids I'm a non-custodial parent, so I'm very much aware of the laws and so on and so forth. So I tell those guys out there that are, are that are divorced, be involved in your kid's life, always. It's the biggest fight that you're going to be in, and it's worth the fight when it's over. No matter how narcissist your ex may be, or their mother may be, or their family may be towards you, ignore that with a smile and continue moving forward. The state of Texas, there's a law called, uh, it's Penal Code 2503, you guys can look it up, it's for interference with child custody. You have a lot of headaches with it because the police lie left and right. Unfortunately, that's just the way they've become. But none the, none, none, none the case, be involved with your kids' lives. And in martial arts, is the best way for you to touch and be part of your kids' lives. You know, Savat was, especially, I was connected with, with uh, my uncle, with my father. Uh, my son is connected with me. My daughter was connected with me. You know, my, my daughter kept on doing it until she was 13. They, they, they told her that uh, some, some family member told her that it, girls didn't do this, so she quit. My son just got his, sil uh, his silver glove. You know, that's, that's three generations of silver gloves. So it's, it's very enthusiastic for me in my in this point in time and moving forward there's a lot of things that I want to do there's a lot of things that I look back and retrospect there's a lot of friends that we've made throughout the years there's some of those friends that have become like family I got students that have uh, been around with me for 30 years now and some that have been around with me for 25 20 many and they call and you know, we become very very good friends we become family actually and we help each other out. That's just the way it should be. There's been a lot of a lot of friends of ours in the martial arts that have that are no longer with us. And I'm going to put their pictures up here that they were either students or friends that are just have gone because of such as life, you know. And they were involved with the school. They were involved with Savat. It's been going on that way, you know. I'll, I'll show a first picture of the first. Seminar that we did actually wasn't the first seminar that we did. It was the first. It was when we were recognized by the French Federation in 1990 that this was the first school of Savat in the United States. 
okay? And the one that brought that plaque was Richard Sela. And I'm gonna show, I'm gonna show it, uh, the picture right here. And the school was different. You can see that the walls were empty. Uh, it was a small crew at that time. My father and my uncle taught. They taught for free for the kids. So many, many guys went through the school. You know, it was, it was something that was enjoyed by, by the, the vicinity here. And it grew. When I moved back to Dallas, we opened up the Academy of French Martial Arts in Dallas. Um, we, had cha we changed the name to the Academy of Martial Arts. Why? Because, uh, you know, uh, Keith C. was teaching Kempo there. Uh, Sensei John Ayers was teaching Aiki and, and Yaido. And we were teaching Capoeira. So it became a collective uh, martial arts school there in Irving, Texas that we had many, many, many things occurred there. We learned a lot, you know. We had our first fights there, you know, the Metro Blast, which I'll, I'll show some pictures of. Um, you know, my uncle passed on in 19... 1998, okay, and in 1998, um, on his deathbed, or before he passed on, because he passed on, on on Thanksgiving Day, he promised me, he told me to make him a promise, to take people back into the ring and make champions. You know, a lot of, uh, you know, I fought in the ring, I was third in the world, there were some issues that, that occurred with forging of my name when, for me to get out by some individual in California that it's a professor over there. Just really, there. Yeah, most of you all know the story. We don't have to go into that. But um, then, when I was going to go the next time, I was already signed, uh, lined up to fight. I had, an, I had an accident in my hand. You know, I blew my tendons. I had eleven reconstructive surgeries that went from 1994 to 1998. Imagine that surgeries that they transplanted tendons and so on and so forth. And it took me out of the ring. But it helped me redesign the nature of what this is as a martial art, which is dance Rusovan. And it's a tremendous martial art that's both an offensive and defensive structure. And it's one that many other martial arts have popped out of it. Students that just came for a little while all of a sudden now are teaching so-and-so Apache combative knife from you know, the the sole heir of uh, whatever whatever tribe, and I mean, they're out there. But Dance Rue Savat influenced many people to develop. And he would influence the French Federation to develop uh, the Savat defense. Of course, my professor developed Box de Rue. And a other, other things occurred because of Dance Rue Savat, you know. A bunch of other elements developed from there. Now, Leaving that aside, we I did make them the promise that I was going to take kids back in the ring. We produced the ring. We got heavily involved in, in boxing. We were part of USA Boxing for a very long time. We had a tremendous team, a uh, team that was the people would literally be afraid. Some coaches when we used to take our teams in there because that, their team, our teams were very that, that's how good they were. Our guys were really really trained, and I used the training that I learned at INSEP under my trainer, uh, Richard Sela, Professor Richard Sela, who's not only my brother, he's my, he's my trainer as well. That training, that, that mode of, of Box Frances Savat, that science, that pedagogy, I put it into boxing. And we produced many champions. In five years, we had 27 champions of uh, Golden Gloves, 27. Today in Laredo, if you gather those guys together that are out there teaching, and you add up all their, could not get to 27 in the last 30 years, okay? That's a fact. But what, uh, so what I'm saying is, I went involved, I got involved when I moved back in Laredo. There was so much drama issues that was going on with it that I just decided to quit. I just said, you know what? I had enough of it, I stopped. Why? Because people's lives. You give so much of my time to folks to teach in the ring, and then they forfeit, or they don't show up to fight. I get it. You're afraid when you're going, gonna, when you're going inside against somebody who's going to try to take your head off. I get it. You know, but you get tired of it being over and over and over and over. 
training to compete, folks, you're taking your coaches, your trainers' time. Some trainers will charge for it. Some trainers won't. So I never train, I never charge for it. But I expected you to do your best. And if you chicken shit it out, you were out, period. That's the way I looked at it. Class was class. Training for the ring was training for the ring. Two different things. Later on in time, you know, we moved down here. We started picking up on my, um, what other milestone that we did? 1996, we formulated uh, USA Savat for the com competition purpose of it. And the Metro, uh, Metro Blast continued going. Um, we had U.S. champions. We had U.S. championships in, in Precomba. That's the only thing we could do. We could not do Comba and um, asshole as well and you know the international federation the french federation had their prerogatives and built you know they started their political nuances because they're very nationalists remember that there's a difference between a patriot and a nationalist a patriot is somebody that loves this country nationalist is somebody that hates a person from another country and i can say this openly the french federation of savat the International Federation of Savant is controlled by the French Federation of Savant, and it is a very nationalistic attitude towards other countries. They're not at that time frame. They might have changed now, but in the last, uh, from the 90s to mid-2006, that's the attitude that they had. I don't know about now. And the reason I say that is because they'll invite people that had not, did not have the advantage, did not have the skill, to fight against somebody that had 100, 125 fights and get massacred and they'll say, we, we, the French, we, we, we won, we won, we won. Look at this, we're the powerful ones. Really? So, unfortunately, that's what happens. But nonetheless, it's a sport that I love. It's a martial art that I lived with. I decided to step away. USA Savat still kept on going because we, we had uh, national f competitions. The last national competition was 2005. Um, uh, the wars kind of put that aside we started producing clubs to open it up but again Savat is very very much specific very very few people understand that it is a martial art those that do understand that it is it's people that have already been involved in martial arts and they're they're researchers in martial arts more than anything else and and unfortunately, that's, that, that's what happens. It takes a long time to make an apprenticeship for you to teach. And because you want teachers, you know, that's what I'm making for now. That's what I'm really, really after. And that's what uh, we're actually doing, you know. We're actually building a structure of, of uh, how can I say, teachers, a stable of them that are, con they're, that are not only capable but they're capable to teach and make sure that their students are capable. Understand the difference? You can go to an eight-hour certificate, pay 500 bucks, get six CBDs, and you're all of a sudden you're an instructor of mucky muck, whatever, and all of a sudden you're out there teaching, you're not capable. You might be capable of teaching whatever was on that DVD or that what they passed on in, that, in, that, in the certificate course, but your students, I guarantee you, are not going to be capable of doing anything and that, unless they have natural skill. Well, nonetheless, I'm not even going to get into that. What uh, people can do what they want, that's the way I look at it. Um, what else, down, going down the line, 10 years after my uncle's passing in 1998, we, had to f we formulated the World Pugilist Hall of Fame. And to honor under USA Savat, because we need it, because it has to be a a, um, a hall of fame, we have to follow certain guidelines. Number one, people cannot get stipends. You can't pay for your for your honor or your award or your recognition. Okay, you can get paid travel expenses, your meals, and so on and so forth. So that's what we did. And this year's our fifteenth year. We've met many living legends of all the martial arts because we respect all the martial arts period so that's what people don't understand about Savat and how I was taught 
You respect everybody until they stop respecting you. Then the respect ends. But you always smile. You embrace every martial art that there is. Why? Because they might like what you're doing and they might eventually start the movement of Savant. That's the way I look at it. That's the way I was taught to appreciate it. And that's the way I have seen it grow. Okay? And that's just the way it is, you know. It's a, it's a fellowship. It's a, martial, it's a martial art event that is open to everybody. It happens every first uh, weekend of November. And we take it that round. It's here in Dorado, Texas. And it's just a fun, fun event, you know. Uh, many other people ask, is there any online courses? There is, folks. There is. You can learn some stuff from it. But you actually have to go and do class. Understand? I invite you, if you want to learn Savant, come to, come to our school. If you're near Dallas, I'll send you to our aid monitor in Dallas. I'll send you to the, our aid monitor in Chicago. I'll send you to the coaches that we have in various parts. You know, and learn. Go out there with an open mind. Have some fun. That's what it's all about. Learning, having fun. And if you ever need to use it to defend yourself, I guarantee you, you're going to be capable of doing that. Okay? There's not going to be no confusion. You're going to be able to. I've uh, created many great individuals in the martial in saboteurs that are, are phenomenal athletes. Not only that, they're phenomenal citizens in society. That's what it's more about. You know, we have some uh, law enforcement officers. We have some firemen. We have doctors, lieutenant colonels, lieutenant commanders, uh, captains in the army, special forces. Not only that, uh, police, and not only in France, also in Brazil. Great elements throughout. Why? Because that's what we try to produce, especially in Dancer and Survive. It's the love not only of us, it's the love for our country, for our community. I was asked, why do you do martial arts? Because I love my community. I love Laredo. I might not agree with its politics and the way they're going, but I love Laredo, I love my community. I love Texas. I love the United States. I was representing the United States before there was even a U.S. Federation or a USA Savat Commission. It was nothing. Understand that? It's popping people around the streets of Paris before people here even knew what the word Savat was. That's a fact. But nonetheless, I'm going to tell you all this. Like, share. This will be the last Monday questions. But we're going to be doing some other stuff that's going to come of age. We're going to be doing more technical in, uh, instruction, not only on kicks, on punches, on ideas, looking over fights that occur, what happened, what should have you done. Remember, it's only speculation and opinion. And... Um, Nobody should be going out there picking a fight, but nobody should be picking a fight on you either. So understand that. I uh, think that I say for those that are going into any martial arts school, research the school, research the instructor, talk to the community, see how they like the person. It's very important. Okay? Um, my link tree, all the information that's in there, if you want to order some shirts and stuff like this, like this one is a great, a beautiful shirt that was designed for us. Um, go right ahead. Also, if you want to join the crew, the, the inner circle, do so there and you'll start learning a little bit of Savat going forth. And like I said, if you want to order some of the books, we do have some, some, some in stock and uh, we'll be having some more coming down. Okay, until next time, much peace. You'll have a great 4th uh, of July. And remember, hug your kids, hug your parents, hug your family. For those around you that care for you, care for them back. All right? Be nice. Till next time. Peace. Today, in America, more than 5.5 million men, women, and children train in a martial art regularly. Bui Tarun Academy has been serving Laredo for over 30 years now. Our adult classes are geared for producing the best in you.
teaching you street-ready techniques with the arts of Savat and Kinpo. You'll learn the traditions of these sciences of combat as passed down professor to student. Hello there, my name is Guru Carlito Banjog. I teach Filipino martial arts and uh, we've really been fortunate uh, that uh, uh, my program has been accepted by many uh, schools uh, and organizations in different parts of the country. And I gotta tell you, when I'm in Laredo, Texas, I like to hang out the boot with the Boutron Academy. Uh, Paul Boutron, the instructor there, uh, he's such a great guy. Uh, he's got a lot of knowledge. Uh, they have a great program. They teach uh, capoeira. capoeira. Um, they also uh, teach uh, our Filipino martial arts uh, and uh, uh, some adult program, and also uh, Sivat, the French art of kickboxing. And uh, I'll tell you, this is uh, such a great school. They have excellent program uh, for children, uh, family, and adults as well. So if you live in the area in Laredo, Texas, you gotta check them out. They're such a great school. Take care. Good morning. My name is Tommy Burks. I'm a ninth degree black belt and senior grandmaster Ed Parker Seniors American Kempo Karate System. Today I'd like to recognize a very good friend of mine and fellow martial artist, Professor Paul Raymond Boutron III. Professor Boutron teaches Sabat and American Kempo at Boutron Academy in Laredo, Texas. If you live in Laredo or if you're uh, in, in the surrounding area and you're looking for a martial arts school to train in and learn self-defense that'll work in the street, uh, I highly recommend Professor Boutron as an instructor and his school as a location to train in. He will show you realistic solutions for realistic situations that can happen in the street. A lot of martial arts schools teach things that really won't work in the street that well. So again, if you or one of your family members is looking for a place to train, I highly recommend this man. Uh, I've known him for 20 plus years. I met him when he was like 18 years old in Irving, Texas, when he was training there in Sabat and Kempo. The man's always represented honor, integrity, and respect. He shows respect to his instructors. He shows respect to his art. He passes that on to his students. And again, that is part of what we do in the martial arts as true martial artists. So again, Professor Boutron, my love and respect. I appreciate what you do. Keep it strong and keep doing what you do, sir. Thank you. Hey everyone, my name is Drew Tim McPatrick. I live in Waco, Texas. I've got 30 years experience in martial arts. I've trained in various systems, uh, full instructor in Jun Fan Jeet Kune Do under two different instructors, full instructor in Lameko Aztec Combatives, which is a Filipino combative system. Um, I hold a brown belt in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. I've trained in catches, catch can wrestling for around 20 years. I first met Professor Paul Butrone and when I was doing a weekend seminar in California around 2010, 2012. So I've known him for eight to ten years. Uh, we connected once we came back from, or once I came back from California, we connected. He has a association, the Gentleman Stick Fighting Association, where he does stick tournaments. I've participated in several of those. I've gone to, I've traveled to Laredo uh, to compete in three of them. I've officiated, so I've worked with him on the on the business level. Got to know him on a personal level. He's a very knowledgeable martial artist. Uh, cares about his students. Cares about what he's doing. Cares about the historical aspect of martial arts. Cares about the respect. So if you're in the Laredo area and you have kids that are you know, wanting to, you, you want to make sure they know how to defend themselves against other kids. You want to make sure that even you know yourself or your kids can defend themselves on the street. I definitely recommend Paul Boutron's Martial Arts Academy. Um, he's a great instructor. Nice guy, great person, and uh, he'll, he'll take care of you. Come train at the best kept secret of Laredo. Give us a call for your free evaluation at 956-401-4868 or check out our website at savat.biz. Follow us on YouTube and Facebook.